Welcome to Time Bolt Office Hours on July 6, 2023. You are live with Doug and Quinston. We are here to check your workflows, answer questions, and generally just make sure that you get the best out of Time Bolt. Today, I figured we'd do workflow audits. That's how Quinston and I've been working to separate our web pages. And basically, if we can start looking at our uh, feature sets as workflows, I think it's going to help people uh, tremendously. It does look like we do have some people on the line today. I want to make sure that we get to you guys first. If you could just introduce yourself, I'll get to each one of you. Just introduce yourself and let us know what type of content you make, how you found TimeBolt, and check your workflows. And like I said, just make sure that uh, you're, you're getting the optimal settings and uh, you're getting the most out of TimeBolt. Gian, how you doing? Are you are you with us? I'm Gian. I'm from, from South Africa. I'm actually serving in the military. I do actually do short form content, like cutting long form content into shorter pieces of content. And I basically bought uh, Time Bolt last month, but uh, I only recently started using it, uh, testing it in uh, Premiere Pro. You, you, are you, how are you recording? Um, basically from uh, iPhone. Okay, you're, you're recording. And then I put uh, the, the footage into Premiere Pro, and then I, I, I edit. And how long are these videos that you're making? Are they shorts? Or did you say like shorts? Very, like very, very, very short. Maybe um, if I take a, a video of like an uh, from YouTube, a podcast or something, maybe that's maybe the longest is an hour, and oh, okay. then basically. 10 or 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I just take out the important uh, pieces and then put it into Premiere Pro and then I use that uh, extension, the time board extension to do the cuts. So you're starting off with an hour long video on your phone of like a, you, you start by just free flowing and talk to your camera and record it on, a, on your phone. Is that what you're saying? I use YouTube podcasts that are hour long. I don't record like in self hour long videos on the, on the iPhone. <laughs> I basically, if I do like and maybe for TikTok or maybe be a one minute or 60 second video I record on here. But when I take clips from like a uh, podcast, I use from YouTube video, video from YouTube actually. And then I just cut out the, from the timestamps. I use the past that are maybe an interesting topic and then I, I make a short nice. out of it. Well, are you importing an entire timeline into uh, Premiere or are you actually using Timebolt uh, markers to mark down, to figure out what sections are most important to you and then creating shorts with those? If I maybe take a 10 minute video, um, I would uh, load that whole video into uh, Premiere Pro and then I use Timebolt to, to cut it. And then I go through the footage and then um, I delete the parts I, I, I don't want. And, and because this, you're, you're brand new, you're brand new using Timebolt, you'd probably like to understand yeah. how to material fast, you know, the fastest, you know, optimize for your uh, optimal settings and then I could also show you how to having to cut multiple shorts out of one long video in Premiere, how to actually do that inside Timebolt first and then and then export that to Premiere so you kind of have a finished video. Yeah, that would be awesome and that. I don't have a video for my phone, but we'll just kind of work with something. We'll 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 do with some kind of Zoom call, okay? Here, I'll share my screen. So uh, this is this is a Zoom call. It could be any type of it could be any type of file, whether it's your phone. If you're recording on your phone and it's vertical, it'll actually output as a vertical file. It'll maintain your aspect ratios and whatnot, whatever you put into. The first thing, the first thing that you're gonna want to do, especially if it's a phone, okay? Like right here, I'm there. This is natural audio settings, okay? Th these uh, there's no enhancements added to this because we have our you know audio dialed in. Look, that's a very clear audio waveform. So I, I know how I record. So my settings are are already set but in on an iphone for example okay if you drop your iphone footage into this and it because it's it looks like are you recording with a external microphone attached to your iphone or just the iphone microphone it's just just the iphone so this is an example of a low quality okay like look at like that right there <laughs> It's it's you it's it's not discernible because if he if he didn't have an external mic hooked up or this is just an example of low quality but it but it often happens even with road mics right like the road wireless mics for some reason even at medium it sounds normal but it comes through pretty flat what you're gonna do is like you can't discern like where the audio is but there actually is audio there's actually audio in this I wonder what you can hear that there's audio there so if your if your waveform is really flat this is what I want you to do just go to open up settings okay hit these three audio normalization options it's going to increase and you're going to have to restart the app okay you hit restart app app restarts drop your file back in once it restarts and look at that Okay, like that significantly added definition to your audio waveform. And that is how that that's how you're the only thing you're going to notice is that when you replay this, the audio is going to sound a little messed up, like it has like a little hollow echo. But that is just for preview purposes only. That's what time bolts doing this to, to make the audio waveforms larger. But it's not going to impact your XML that you export or, you know, through the integration with Premiere. 
Okay. I already said that settings as, as default, Doug, because I saw it in one of your YouTube videos. Uh, so I said that to default, that those settings. And, and that worked for you? Did you process your first file through TimeBolt and that worked for you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. So it sounds like you've already got your audio settings uh, done correct, and you're you're basically capturing more or less of the audio by increasing or decreasing the decibel level, not going to left and right padding. So most of the time, this is going to be, you know, these default settings are right. If you make any changes, hit update silence detection. Don't I don't recommend going right pad anything less than 0 0.12 because it'll cut off words. The left padding I have on, on 0, 04 or 5, I think. I think you, you mentioned that in the quick start video. 04? Yeah. 0, 04 or 0. 0.5, I think I have mine on. I, I would, that is too large. Yeah. I, okay. I would. So I would, 0 0.5 is half a second. That's too large. It's so I must, I must take it down to 0. 0.1. It, do you. Point is zero one. the. Point zero one. Did you read that in the documentation? Um, no, no, no. There's like after you purchase, there's, there's a, a video on a on a page with that like introduces okay, the. Sure. I saw it on, on on the settings on on that video. I'll check it out. I, that shouldn't be there, but. So you want to have this a point point zero one, and then this is point one five on this side of of uh, the right padding, or down to point one two. It just depends on how clear your ends of your S and P's are. Okay, that's how you prevent the early cutoff of words once you. As long as you're not trying to use this to alter uh, uh, how much audio you're ca you're capturing, are these is this uns unscripted video, Jim? Um, do you write a script do you, or do you not write a script? I, I actually do like for as I said, a short script, very short script. Okay. I can make a, a video for fifteen thirty or a minute. But when I work with uh, hour long videos, podcast I, uh, videos, I download from YouTube. I use a, a podcast video from YouTube. Is the different sound settings I should use for that, or is it a, is it the same when I when I cut it? it? Depends on the audio. It depends on once you play the sound, play it and time bold. If you see, if you think that there is a problem and you think that you know it needs more definition, more like size. The waveform needs more size, then you can turn those on. It doesn't have to be always on. Some files are better, some files are not. You can choose uh, which settings you want. So there are three settings, right? Uh, Doug, can you open it up? So there are three settings. Uh, they do distinct things. So the volume increase is pretty obvious. It increases the size of the, the waveform. The, the noise reduction basically tries to, let's say there's a background noise, right? Like there's a fan or something like that, which is like a constant humming sound in the background. It tries to reduce that sound and audio normalization basically tries to flatten the top parts. So let's say you have a loud waveform, but like it's so loud that it's the gain is getting chopped off at the top. And you know, when you're having a very loud sound, like a third, a third sound in the background, it could like puncture your uh, ears. That, that sort of sound. It tries to normalize the top. That's about it. Also, just to clarify the video that he mentioned after signing up in that video, it said 0 0.04. So which is close to 0 0.01, I'd say anything below 0 0.05 is okay. Uh, Doug likes okay. to be very aggressive, 0 0.01. But any, anything below 0 0.05 is perfectly fine. You download a podcast, an hour-long podcast from YouTube. Are you giving reaction videos to that? Like analyzing them? Are you? I don't understand. I take the, the, the video and then I cut out, you know, the interesting, engaging parts of that video and I make it into a short. Of somebody else's okay. video? Oh, okay, yeah. of, 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 of another video. Yeah. Yeah, not my, own, not my own content. Okay, okay. I, now, now I understand. That content yeah. typically is already going to be, that content's typically already going to be like cut up pretty well, right? Like yeah. the dead air is pretty much gone in, in, the, in that type of content. Oh. Or In time, we follow this workflow, right? That you have a long video and then you basically cut up uh, make the video for the for YouTube, right? And then we have a yeah. second step, right? And the second step, we actually change the settings. Doug, I think that's what he's looking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Change was, the settings. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna show him. Yeah, the second. Let me let me get to a uh, video. That... So what happens is that these settings, right? They're great for long form content, right? But when you okay. want to like cre create a very short video, like maybe ten seconds, fifteen seconds, you want the yeah. cuts to be super aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. Because they need to be. They, they, there is supposed to almost be no speak or uh, data at. At, at, at all like it should be like very precise yeah. cuts on each side yeah, yeah correct so for that reason we have a different um piece of settings that we use to change the okay. values so doug will show it to you right now so for example this is a raw video okay this would be something that before it goes to youtube well this would be something that this channel owner does before it goes to youtube cuts out all the dead air you can see my value right here is at 0.5. I'm cutting out any sounds that's greater than 0.5. That's not going to be the case with, with you, okay? You're basically going to be dropping in a video that now looks like this. The dead air is mostly removed, okay, at that 0.5 value. So as you can see, like the dead air, there's really no dead, in here, dead air in here because I've already removed it with time bolt. What, what, what I do now is... So imagine that that video that the dead air is removed is for YouTube. That's the long form. You know, I went from a I went from a, 
hour long down to, you know, uh, 24 minutes. Okay. But now, okay. And that's what I posted to YouTube. I added my chapter markers and all that kind of stuff. But for you, you, you can now go and say, now I want to create shorts for YouTube. Now I want to extract just the good parts that I want to use out of this video. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to remove silence is longer than, and I'm going to put this at point two and I hit update silence detection settings. This is wild. Now, what did that do? That basically took our that long timeline that we had that had the random cuts. And, and these are almost kind of cut out into like statements or concepts that are yeah. naturally were spoken. And now what this does is with this cut up, it becomes much easier now to create markers. So now I'm only going through 24 minutes of footage. What I'm going to do is put this on 1.5 X speed. Okay. Just whatever you do, whenever you just start a project, put this on 1.5 X. It'll make your whole life easier all the time. Once you put that on 1.5 X, you just hit space bar. It's spelled out, right? So now you're now you're going to be previewing at 1.5x speed. No, like EMC. <laughs> as you're as you're as you're previewing, okay, you can hit the L key and it will increase your preview speed. Okay. <laughs> so now, as you're previewing, let's I'm say sorry, you have a channel, another channel with 300,000 subscribers, almost 300,000 subscribers. Again, there, 297. Let's say that this was an important part, okay, that I, I I thought was important. I hit the M key and that creates a marker. Okay. Okay. I keep going. I keep going. Video, and it's great to see that you're using Bolt. And I just wanted to work. And let's say this is important. I create a marker. And as you keep marker, going, enhancements that create this. I create another marker and create another marker. And if you let's say you're doing this for like YouTube Shorts, okay. And this is important. Yeah, because really so now what I can do is I can do keep only mark cuts, okay. And what this will do is it'll shut off all the other elements of the timeline. Keep only mark cuts. Now what happens is is I as I play this back, the out the output duration is 30 seconds. So I could add more time to this if I wanted to, but you're able to see the output duration here as well. So if you just get it close, okay, if you're I'll show you how to handle it. If like you get up to like they're like it's oh, it's a hundred seconds or 120 seconds. We'll show you how to deal with that real quick, you know, without uh throwing away any content. But that you do interactive bi biology type videos. Yeah. And I just wanted to work with you today. And there are yeah. things that uh, such as creating chapter markers and some other enhancements that once you get the export right, uh, um, play on the beach or see. Right. So, so you, as you can see, we're keeping only mark cuts. And what I can now go do is I can download uh, XML. Okay. And it'll just be those specific cuts so that I could import that into Premiere or I can, I can uh, import into Premiere by saving timeline cuts here. Okay. And that'll use create that and use the extension. Right. So now you can go through and make multiple XML files from one long, from one long video. video file, right? And it'll just start numbering them. You're not going to overwrite the previous version and stuff. So we've created a lot of sale, uh, fail proof, uh, ways to do that. Then this is kind of the tricky part. It's, it's not really. It, so in order to just go back to uh, the timeline, okay, where you, you got all your cuts, you have to hit Command Z, and that undo, and undoes all the previous stuff, right? And just get you back to your timeline. And now, now you can, if those were the markers you wanted, you don't need any edits or anything like that, you can just go clear markers, and now you can start on your next short. Let's say half of this is what you want, or you just want this middle part right here, right? So you can, very well. you can, you can, there's a, there's four quick keys, okay? For lack of a better acronym, it's called SLOP, okay? S L O P. And S uh, splits the timeline. But let's imagine Excellent. that right here. Let's say this part is important, okay? I hit S. See how it made a little cut right here? Yeah. I go to the other side. I click S. See how it made a little cut, okay? And now, so that stood for split. You can turn the L increases uh, playback speed. Now you can click O for the slop S L O, and that turns the scene on or off. In this case, you wanted to put a marker there, right? Put an M, right? So now you can put a marker there. You know, do the same thing, and now you can also render in time bolt, right? If you're not you know, if you want to main, it, you have to just kind of gauge the audio quality for yourself, but you know, it might make sense if you're just already using an existing YouTube video, just to render in time bold. I'm, I'm not exactly sure about the, the quality or what, you, what you're doing inside Premiere, but um, now imagine, so let me, so imagine, let's see, I keep only mark cuts, making my second short and the output duration is 41 seconds. If I was rendering this inside time bold, let's say I had to have a 30 second, I had to hit 30 seconds. Okay. And I'm rendering in time bolt. Uh, my short could only be 30 seconds, but I got 40, I got 40 seconds, 41 seconds. And it's important that I don't lose any of that information. This is what I can do. Uh, activate turbo mode. I want to limit this time down to 30 seconds. Okay. And it's just going to increase the rate of speech over the whole thing without making you sound like a chipmunk. I hit add to render queue. 
start rendering. And here is my 30 second short. Okay, there you go. There's a beat. You're never too far away from the beat. Smart man. I, I actually watched the that vesting. Like you, you can, you can understand, you know, I put, I had I t knocked this down 10 seconds on a 30 second film. You know, if, yeah, if, like 30, if you do 10 seconds or 90 seconds, it's super fast, but uh, it's, it's not meant for such big <laughs> yeah, yeah. changes. Yeah. My best, uh, my favorite setting is I think 1.125x. Yep. One point. That's yeah. our, that's one point. Yeah. That's the default. 1.125x. Uh, that slightly increases it, but it saves a lot of time over like a big video file. So if you have like a big video file, maybe 10 minutes, slightly increasing the speed, like because people can speak faster now in, in your ear, it just makes the content more dense. So I hit command Z to undo. I can now clear my markers again and move on to the next short. So do you have any questions about that? It's, it's clear, Doug. Thanks. But if I take a like a part of the uh, uh, YouTube video clip that I already cut it from that, maybe from that 10 minute clip, I maybe cut it uh, from one of the chapters that is maybe uh, say a minute long. I only take that piece and I put it into, and uh, then I, I use that, still that set, settings of the 0. 0. 0.2, if you if you understand what I'm saying. That, say the, 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 the piece is it, just... It will still work. Long. It will still work. Okay. It, okay. Depending, it, well, it's just what depends is like, if, if it's a YouTube video that's already been time bolted at 0. 0.2, right? There's a lot of YouTube videos time bolted. There's, it, it's, it's not, you're going to have to find the minimum viable cut because if you get something that's already jump cut really, really well, you're, you're just going to be splitting the timeline. Just play with these two values, filter below and remove silence longer than. That will give you finer and finer cuts the more you like tweak them. And, and, so it, that, and of course, the S. Maybe uh, one minute or... A any like size a file. Minute, yeah. Any size clip. Yeah. You can even have a five hour size clip and it'll still work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and that's, I, that's, that's the thing with TimeBolt, right? Yes, TimeBolt doesn't have any limits on how big you want the file to be. You can have as big a file or as small a file. It, it's, it's okay. And, and the only purpose, okay, th like your use case is very unique, like, as Quince was saying. The only purpose of changing this, any of these values was just to get some pre-existing cuts in here. But if the, but if the video is already, you know, chopped up, you've got the S key, right? Like it could be just like one long timeline, right? You're going to have, I, I, I think you have to have some level of cuts, don't you? Or does time bolt produce an error? I can't. Yeah, you need one cut at least. Time bolt, the whole thing could be green. It's fine. It, the everything whole thing can be, be green. Is fine. Everything can be green as long as you split somewhere, right? Right? Like no, I I don't think so. You can have the whole thing green. It's fine. Okay. It doesn't need a split at all. Just it, because it just creates one big block. So yeah. if you get it like this, okay, this is probably when you're getting stuff off YouTube. This is just what your timeline is going to look like, okay? And you're not going to be able to do a point two, and like because that like I go from point five to point two. Other people may have just started at like a point two, right? So let's just pretend that this is all you've got, right? There's there's no cuts in it. Yeah. That's exactly when you're uh, you're just M1, M1, M2. I like I'll this spot. Uh, update time. Make sure you update to the latest version. That's and I like this spot. And I just go M. Right. So I'm not messing with any variables. I'm just cutting up S S M S S M. Right. That's how you. That's how you just go about marking whatever it is that you're looking to do. And then in that case, you just do clear markers. And so that's that's how that would work. Your efficiency will increase a lot if you just learn how to use the keyboard shortcuts, like because then yeah. you don't even okay, need to use the mouse. You just to play, play, play. So the thing is, there are a few more shortcuts. Up and down key moves to the next green cut or the previous green cut. So you press up key, it just shifts to the next green cut. Uh, you can use the side arrow keys for the frame. So one side arrow key will go one frame to the left or right. And if you press shift, you can do 10 frames. So shift plus arrow key, left or right, 10, 10 frames. So you can use the add arrow keys and the shortcuts to basically speed it up. The See, o like D Doug is going very fast to the timeline just by using the keyboard. And then the O key is a great way to delete large blocks of content like do 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 yeah so you can just press keep pressing hell you can hold it down i don't even have to press you can it. Hold, hold it down and just, just cut out everything <laughs> and then uh what type of video are you making on your like so on your phone do you do, you do any other type of videos besides uh pulling it off youtube and like doing yeah, I'm a, I'm from basically basically just a short script like a 30 second, 50 second TikTok video for, for YouTube short. So well, if you're making it, this is what I would recommend. If you're making, if you have an iPhone video, I don't care if it's 30 seconds or whatnot. Like I said, just run it through time bolt instantly. It's going to cut the dead air, the stuff that you don't, the stuff that you don't want. If, if you were unscripted, I don't, uh, what's your, what's the native language, I guess. In South Africa, we basically there's 11 languages, but mostly English. Okay. And then my native language is Afrikaans. Okay. It's similar to Dutch. Uh, well, if it's if if it's English, we've got um check to where you can go through and check for ums and ahs. Uh, I don't know how much again with 30 second video. I don't really know how much that really matters to you, right? Because you might as well just cut it out. 
quick enough. There's not that much content. It's so easy to just, if, if you're only looking at preview in 30 seconds, you'll be able to drop it in the time bolt, remove the dead air, and check for ums and ahs, likely and hit render in 30 seconds or less, right? That's 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 what you're that's what you're able to do with quick keys. Check allows you to really expand that when you get into like longer, even like four or five minute video. Anything above four or five four or five minutes. Oh, I do. You know, I I do it every. You know, anything above three minutes, you can do. And then you all you do is after that is cut. All you're gonna do is you can either hit uh, XML to save as XML. Or you can just do it straight, especially with iPhone video, do activate turbo mode, 1.125X, add to render queue, start rendering. And that's just basically like, and I don't know how they do it in Premiere, but it's just basically taking that clip and just condensing it down uh, to make it faster. So then after that, you, yeah. you save it as a JSON file? Or yeah, you, you can just do that too. It like that into Premiere Pro? Correct. You can do it the ex ex extension also. Because oh, I like using the extension because the clip is in and then you just Correct. edit the top of the yeah. clip. The extension is, uh, I would say it's faster than XML, but it's more convenient. It's yeah. it's it's made for multi-cam projects. Okay. The extension is great for multi-cam projects. XML will also do punch in uh, Premiere Plus. Plugin. What I would recommend if you're not doing multi-track, okay, I would just do XML because it, it actually is going to export more of the, it's going to export fast forward silences and it's also going to export your punch. What I would, what I would be looking at if I were you, if I was also doing these, these quick videos on a, on a iPhone, okay, of myself, I would, you basically SLOP, the last of the four keys is yeah. punch. You hit P, you just got to hit, start hitting keys, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be afraid to hit some keys because you'll, you realize it's all, responsive you hit p and you can zoom in uh by you can see how it says 125 135 175 now where do those values come from they come from here 125 135 175 in settings so if your face is like like instead of it being like 150 if your face is uh uh, smaller increments like you you want to keep your face boxed in like if i i can go to it just basically changes the punch value and now i can do option or alt and change the position of the with the arrow keys i can change the position of the punch right or you can go something like you you know you'll probably do this to begin with just to kind of see oh okay i see it goes up and there's nine coordinates and all that stuff but then once you start playing around with the p key right and then your alt or option and your arrow keys you, you can just do cool things with it you can add punch you can show things so you can you can do that with your iphone your with your phone video as well and those mark and that will export through xml these like these punch values so so you suggest if i record from the, the iphone maybe 15 30 seconds one minute but i do it like that and export it to a, a xml import it to, to premiere you can use either premiere. it's just uh whatever you feel convenient is good i, I don't have an opinion on that <laughs> well well depending on what it depends on what features like it depends on the feature that you yeah want. correct correct so if you're using punch then i'd say xml so the the, the xml i'm not a, actually a professional in, in, in editing i'm still also learning premium i've basically been using oh, you, you want to see how it's done i i, I can show it to you it's very yeah. easy. because i've only been i'm still learning a lot from premium okay, let me open it, Premiere Pro. So I'm not you, you'll see this and you'll be like oh sh oh this is much easier i'll, I'll, I'll show you once right so i have loaded the video in everything is good i will just go at the bottom and there's a button which is over here it says xml click on it okay. now i have premiere pro opened up i'll just take this file and just drop it in Next, what you do is to open the sequence. So in Premiere Pro, it's called a sequence. The timeline is called a sequence. There is, uh, you change your uh, icon settings from this to a list view. The reason you do this is because you can discern which icon is what. So this icon is a video icon. This icon is a yes. sequence icon. So I will come over here and double click on the sequence icon. There's no no need to use an extension. Like this is only awesome. for single files. Uh, so yeah. if you have a single file that you're using, this is the best test way. Like it's fast because I just came over here. I selected some file. Maybe I select this file. Hey, wait, before you export, hold on. Before, wait, okay. before you before you export, can you just go ahead and uh, throw in some like a fat do a fast forward and a punch just to show how the, the... Oh, yeah okay okay. So you come over here. You have this. Let's say I punch in the, over here into Duck's face, and here I punch into green screen and then maybe i will come over here turn on fast forward silences mute this and do a speed ramp i do a speed ramp for this part and then i do a speed ramp for this and then i export xml i take it drop it in and open the timeline first part is sped, sped up and then here we are zoomed into duck's face here we are zoomed into duck's good. face here we are zoomed into uh, the green screen and this part is sped up and left the door open <laughs> So that those are the three effects we added. So so the punches is basically like zoom in and out and correct. Okay. Correct. 
It's a zoom in and out. So it's punching in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Man. So, so yeah, X XML is good for like uh, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. XML is great for single files because you can just click one button and export the XML, drop it in Premiere Pro, mm -hmm. just drag and drop it and open the timeline. That, that's it. The extension is great okay. if you have like two, three files you're dealing with and you know, you, you can't, oh. because in time bold, you can uh, get the silences for, for the file and then you can apply the same silence to like multiple files, right? Because basically what I use is only single files, right? Because it's yeah, so, only a single. Yeah, yeah. So just click on the XML button, drop it in, you're done. Yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. That, that, yeah. It really helped me a lot now and made things very, very, very clear on, on how I should I should do this. Awesome. With time bolt. So awesome. Are, are you, uh, that, that's, that's great. Last question. Uh, why are you using your iPhone just for our personal, like, why do you use your iPhone to capture video versus capturing video on your computer? Probably if I would say I don't have uh, proper camera equipment, I think if I have to set up, a, as you're saying now, capturing it on the computer, you need a uh, thing, camera equipment for it. So that's a, that's, that's a little bit way out of my, my budget now to have equipment. And, and it also depends because I'm not doing like, you know, uh, YouTube content or, uh, yeah my own youtube channel too if you run your own youtube channel you will definitely need to have equipment like that Correct. so with tiktok normal short form videos i don't think you actually if you have a proper quality like an iphone it's proper for doing short form content Perfect. but if you're doing youtube uh, videos and topics and all that stuff you will need some sort of equipment like that setup so i'm not i'm not there yet on starting youtube my own youtube channel or doing content like that. I'm mostly focused on uh, short form and editing short form content. I'm taking long form content and making it into short form content. Yeah, nice. Because uh, that's, that's basically what that's every, everyone is actually moving into to, uh, doing yeah, short form content. Lots of new apps. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So how did you, and last question, how did you find Timebolt? What made you look for a solution? Timebolt, I saw it somewhere, man. Oh, I, I don't remember if I was searching for like in steps to make cutting easier in, 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 in Premiere Pro. I think that's yeah. where I found because you know it's 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 stressful man sitting and cut, 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 and <laughs> I hate yeah, it yeah. actually cutting. So I was looking for maybe if there's some short uh like um, tips or tricks that you can use to cut quicker. Nice. So I then I, I think I stumbled on time. So I when I checked, I checked, damn, this is the perfect perfect nice. thing I need for, for it's gonna save me a lot of time. And and where was that the only where are we the only solution that you looked at were you like what, what what did your research look like did was that um but right now it, it was the only solution but uh, I, I also saw a video but it's still in beta i saw it on tiktok one of these um premiere pro um people that, that you know give stuff and stuff like that on on, on tiktok he, he was talking about this i think it's firecut.ai uh, it's still in beta now uh it, it basically what i saw what he was showing in the video with basically um it's also like a little app where you click the button and it cuts the, the, the thing, the video for you in uh, Premiere. Nice. So I think that's that's the that's the only compared to you, it's the, it's the only thing that's probably coming out now. Or the, but it's still in beta. I think uh, the, that guy said it's still in beta. So um, that's the only thing I saw compared to or close to to your to your nice. product. What's yeah. nice about what's nice about Timebolt is a standalone app. You can do the editing inside yeah. the app, and you have a lot more control over what you keep. Yeah. You know the punch in variables because you know you're exporting versus doing all that work in Premiere. Uh, so you're you're basically saving. Controlling the t controlling the clock, controlling the timeline before you get into Premiere, and then that way, once you have once you're in Premiere, it's a fully cut timeline, and you're just adding design elements or whatever else that you would do. Uh, to yeah. footage. So, Jan, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, coming on the show today and awesome, explaining man. your workflow, and it's fun doing a little yeah, audit. Yep. I actually learned I, I learned a, a lot, a lot. And thanks for the value, man. Because. I would have probably, if I didn't jump on the call, uh, I would have probably still be stuck with, uh, I think, some questions I had in um, regarding, you know, because I, I thought I was doing the right thing, just following what the quick start guide said. But actually jumping on the call with the stuff I'm doing, you actually made it very clear on, on, on how I can go about using it. Awesome. And, uh, so thanks for the value, man. It, uh, it helped me a lot. It's a, it's a very great product. Actually saving me a lot of time than than you know, manually editing <laughs> or cutting the things in. <laughs> More than time, it's saving you your brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keeping you creative. Well, well that's great. Well, uh, Quinson, you, uh, just, so, just so you know, the let me share my screen. We are creating a help support site. And as you can see, we have all of our different still updates. Loading. And... Still loading for me. Now it's yeah, it's still loading. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. So this is so we're, we basically have a support support site that is going to go through any type of issues that you may be having. Uh, our features lists, right? So you're able to go through the next articles and see how to do absolutely everything. As you can see, Quincy, it's come along pretty nice. Um, obviously, the, the obviously 
you know, I don't want these, uh, it's not ready for prime time, but, uh, with the retraction, the menus and stuff like that, Correct. but, uh, this is all stuff that's, it's getting done. And I think it's just going to, it's going to answer a lot of questions. We're going to be directing everybody to this troubleshooting site. So this will, you know, handle 95% of any issues you may have, or, you know, if like, just like when you jumped on this call, what else can train, you know, can time bolt do it uh, basically goes through each one of our um, features and lets you know how to use each chapter markers for YouTube, how to make a short, that type of stuff. So pretty excited about that. This is going to be our new gaming page. I love this thing. And and uh, these are all custom. These are just place. These are all custom uh, videos that show each one of these steps where I'm trying to get these buttons to make it to where it work. That's very difficult to do in Kajabi. We might be getting it close, but it's it's worth it to even have it on there regardless. Yeah get time bullet, get our questions. And now we just had that feedback gaming go live. Uh, that gentleman had what over 117,000 subscribers, uh, nice. direct, directing his gaming people where to go. So, uh, excited to get excited to get that live as well. And I'll, um, you know, it, it, it is interesting with, with these, with these specific type of workflows, when you show me that one video, that one website where it was like pick and choose, that's what I think time bolt comes down to, you know, is, is just what are complete workflows for a specific use case type and direct people that way, that way they can really become familiar. It, because the simple fact is, is that people today, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of our customers, they make multiple types of content, whether it's a minute long video that they're sending to a colleague or, you know, a 20, 20 minute video that they're posting to YouTube or what they're, you know, posting to Instagram, people are making a uh, spectrum of, of video content. We want to be able to show how we yeah. can add value to the bulk of those workloads. So that's, uh, yeah, is it maybe possible, uh, you can put a short tutorial on your, on your, on your YouTube as well for short form creators on actually using like you, you showed me now, uh, the, the thing that the content that talked about, awesome. how yeah. to edit videos, how to edit shorts for time. <laughs> and that's, we do record these. We record these and upload them to our YouTube channel. So this is something that we'll post. Well, uh, this is a good. This is this is a good tutorial. This is something that we'll chapter out. We'll use our YouTube chapter markers. But yes, just like we, what I did for gaming, I'm also working on one for for YouTube. Right, because we're starting to get mature enough to really branch out and show what these complete workflows look like. So uh, you know, you'll know much much sooner in the process. I think this can also apart from people that are doing you know long form content for YouTube it can can help like in short form creators a lot also as well specifically people editing in uh, you know Premiere and Final Cut Pro it saves a lot of time <clears throat> it saves a lot of time great well I'm definitely going to cut that out and put that <laughs> no, it's good <laughs> we'll make a short out of that yeah. so so great Jen that's all that I have Quinston are you good to go all right great well thanks Perfect. again Thanks again for joining us. That's Time Bold Office Hours on Thursday, July 6, 2023. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and if you like the content, get a notification bell. And we're out of time. Thank you. Bye-bye, okay. guys. Have a good Bye. day. Bye.